Well, my um, clock just turned to 3.45, so I think we'll go ahead and get started um, with this first ESU 8 Wednesday webinar. Thank you to um, those of you who joined us. I uh, didn't figure that this was probably a very popular topic, but it is one that is required, and um, it was a suggestion from the Administrative Assembly that we have a webinar on this topic so that uh, we could get the information um, either live or recorded out to all of the school staff across ESU 8. Um, this is the first in a series of webinars that we are going to be offering this year. Um, the upcoming ones include next week's um, presentation by Deb Rogge on PD360, which is um, an online professional development resource. Uh, Heidi Rethmeyer, who's one of our new staff developers, will be presenting STEM opportunities for schools on October 2nd, and she'll be focusing on science, technology, engineering, and math opportunities. Corey Dahl will um, share tech tips on October 9th, and the following week, on October 16th, Molly Ashoff is going to um, share some information about the Common Sense Media website and digital citizenship. Um, one of the things that we're doing, each live webinar will be recorded, and I'm recording this one right now, and a link will be placed on our ESU8 website so that school staff can access any of the information 24-7. Um, As I stated earlier, this initial webinar is entitled Hazard Communication Standard, and it's um, intended to provide school staff with just some real basic information um, as required by OSHA and recommended by the Nebraska Department of Labor. Um, as we know, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, um, known as OSHA, has established um, a standard, the Hazard Communication Standard, which is related to the use of chemicals in the workplace. The standard is often um, called the HASCOM standard or the right to understand standard and it describes what employers must do to ensure that um, employees are working with chem chemicals safely in, the, in their work environment. We just have a few short goals for this webinar and these are goals that are required by OSHA for the training. Um, we'll be just sharing some brief information about the new revised HASCOM standard. I'll go over the uh, required elements for chemical labels, and I will be describing um, the format for safety data sheets. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, our Secretary of Labor says that exposure to chemicals is one of the most serious threats facing American workers today. And she goes on to say that uh, she believes the revisions to this HASCOM standard will make our workplaces safer for all of us. Um, according to OSHA, every day more than 32 million workers are exposed to 650,000 hazardous chemical products in more than 3 million American workplaces. And our schools are no exception. There are an estimated 945,000 existing chemical products on the market today in our country, and hundreds of new ones are being introduced annually. Well, we're all entitled to a safe and healthful place to work. And as employees and employers, we also have a right to understand what chemicals are in our workplace that we might be exposed to and how to protect ourselves. Um, we all know that chemical exposures can um, cause rashes or burns or may even contribute to more serious medical conditions. So it's important for us to be aware of what um, is in our environment at work. So what is a hazardous chemical? Well, it's any chemical that is classified as a physical or health hazard, combustible dust, or an agent that can cause either suffocation or spontaneously ignite on contact with air. Um, when I look at those pictures there, I think of all the uh, toxic materials and dangerous chemicals that I even have in my house. And we know that we have 
those same chemicals in our schools. Um, some of the hazardous chemicals in schools might be toner, ink, paint products, um, some of the reagents that are in our science classrooms and labs, certain cleaning products, and um, certain types of glue. Now, employers have responsibilities to uh, keep the workplace safe, uh, to meet the needs and the hazards that are there, including um, having an inventory of hazardous chemicals, making sure that once the new HAZCOM standard goes into place that the labels on those chemicals are correct and up to date, um, keeping safety data sheets on the, on the um, hazardous chemicals, and also training employees. This basic training that you're receiving today is the first step in compliance for this new revised HAZCOM standard. And it's uh, required to be completed by December 1st, 2013. There are other specific requirements that will be phased in um, over the next three years through June 2016. Well, not only do uh, employers have responsibilities, but as school staff, we also have responsibilities. We have a responsibility to follow all school policies and procedures related to chemical use. We need to seek information when appropriate and wear personal protective equipment, um, like gloves or eye protection when needed. If we're lacking instruction, we're not sure how to use a chemical, how to dispose of a chemical, or how to store something, um, don't use it. Wait and seek information first and make sure that you're authorized to use that chemical. And finally, even if an injury or an exposure is minor, remember to report it immediately. Now, our best source of information about chemicals is probably the product label. Always read product labels before mixing chemicals together and never ever dispose of old or unused chemicals before identifying the disposal manner dictated by either the label or the safety data sheet. Um, a safety data sheet, which I will des uh, describe in more detail, is simply a bulletin that's pulled out by the chemical manufacturers that tell about the physical and the health hazards of a product. Um, a few years ago, um, many of our area schools participated in a chemical cleanout program because they had a lot of old chemicals in their chemistry labs and they were uncertain about how to dispose of them. Those are the kinds of things that we really need to think about um, and check the, the uh, safety data sheets before we do any kind of disposal of chemicals. Um, the revised HAZCOM standard incorporates part of the globally harmonized system of classifications of chemicals and labeling. Um, and this GHS standardizes chemical labels and classifications worldwide. And there are specific requirements, and I'm seeing right now that my um, graphics didn't come up. I'm hoping that we'll see them on later slides. Anyway, the labels have specific requirements. They have to be in English, and if you have employees who do not speak English, they must be provided in other languages for those non-English speaking employees. Uh, because according to OSHA, each worker has the right to understand. Now here's a sample label. Um, OSHA's HASCOM standard requires that these new labels have six specific components. And they are the product identifier, a signal word, hazard pictograms, hazard statements, precautionary statements, and the supplier's identification information. So let's take a closer look at each one of these elements. The first one, um, the product identifier is just simply how the chemical is identified. Um, and it's usually a chemical name, or it could be a code number or a batch number. And again, I apologize. I don't know why the graphics in my PowerPoint aren't showing up. 
Um, there are only two words that are used as signal words, danger and warning. Um, danger is uh, used for more severe hazards, where warning is uh, uh, reserved for less severe hazards. And these words are just to alert the reader to uh, the hazards associated with the chemical and indicate the severity. This signal word is probably one of the first words that will pop out at you when you look at a label. Now the hazard pictograms are graphic symbols that are used to communicate specific information. And I'm going to go to the next slide and hope that this one shows up. Oh, and it didn't. Well, this isn't good. OK, well, I guess I'll just describe it. Um, they're one of the key elements for um, labeling under the GHS. And they all have specific characteristics. Um, it must be a black symbol on a white background with a red frame, and it's set at the point. Um, as of June 1, 2005, the HASCOM standard will require that all labels of hazardous chemicals include a pictogram to alert users to the chemical hazards. This slide is supposed to be showing you the eight pictograms. And I, I think what I'm going to do, since you're so kind to uh, <laughs> attend today. I'm going to go through the slides and I'll just do the audio portion. I am going to uh, re-record this and make sure that all the slides have the pictures so that when staff want to uh, listen to this information by clicking on the link on our web page, they will have uh, the uh, graphics in front of them. Um, there are eight pictograms. They're uh, a health hazard, flame, an exclamation mark, corrosion, glass cylinder, exploding bomb, flame over circle, which shows those uh, chemicals that would um, ignite and become combustible when they're exposed to oxygen, and a skull and crossbones. And then there's a ninth pictogram that um, is for an environmental pictogram. It's not mandatory under OSHA, but it might be used because it does provide some additional information. Um, one of the other label requirements is hazard statements, and these, this is, there's an example here. Um, causes damage to kidneys through prolonged or repeated exposure when absorbed through the skin. Um, these statements are real brief statements. They describe the nature and the degree of the hazard, and they'll be listed right beside or right underneath that, um, either the word danger or warning. Precautionary statements um, give more information. They describe measures that can be used to minimize or prevent the dangerous effects. And there's four different types, prevention, response, storage, and disposal. Um, examples would be things like do not breathe dust or fumes, get medical advice if you feel unwell, um, store in a cool, well-ventilated place, or uh, dispose of contents in accordance with local and state regulations. And the final label requirement is just simply the uh, manufacturer contact information. So if you found a bottle of sulfuric acid in a closet at school, um, which key word from this label would you focus on to determine if the chemical is hazardous? Well, of course, it's the word danger. That, that should kind of grab your attention and, and focus your attention to the hazardous nature of the acid. And you see the two pictograms there. We have the skull and crossbones, and corrosion should also really grab your attention and make you know that this is a chemical that um, is very, very hazardous. Remember that precautionary statements um, will assist you with prevention to minimize exposure They'll give you some actions to take in case of accidental spillage or contact, including uh, first aid actions. And they'll also tell you how to properly store and dispose of the chemical. Now, you might be wondering, does everything fall under the HASCOM standard? No. Um, there are some exceptions. Um, household chemical products are often exceptions to the, to the HASCOM standard. However, when 
these same products are used in greater frequency than normal home use, like when a custodian might use a, a certain cleaning product several times during the day, and he uses it, he or she uses it every single day, then it would fall under the HASCOM standard. Or when the uh, potential for exposure is greater than with home use or the regular, regular use is changed, um, as in the chemistry lab, then the labels and the safety data sheets must follow that HASCOM standard. There are some other um, exceptions too. Foods, um, drugs, over-the-counter drugs, prescription drugs, or products that are regulated by the Consumer Product Safety Act. Another component of the um, HASCOM standard is the, uh, the standardized format for safety data sheets. Um, these were formerly known as material safety data sheets, and the term that you might be familiar with is MSDS. Anyway, these safety data sheets must accompany the hazardous chemicals and are a much more complete resource for details. The information must be presented in a consistent, user-friendly 16-section format. And here are the 16 sections. Um, if you look at this slide and just focus on the first eight sections right here, you can see that those contain general information about chemicals, uh, including the hazards, the composition, what to do for first aid measures, um, how to do handling and storage, what kind of personal protective equipment is needed to be um, used with this chemical. This information should be really helpful for people who need to get the information real quickly and, and just at a glance. The remaining sections, sections 9 through 16, contain more technical and scientific information, um, but they do also give some information here about um, uh, disposal considerations or how to transport it. Some of this information might be important for your custodians to be aware of and to know where to find it. Now here's a sample safety data sheet. Um, this shows the first eight sections and you can see here we've got the product identification. This tells about the hazards. You can see the pictograms and those will be the exact same pictograms that will be on the label. Okay, so there is a correlation between the safety data sheet and the label itself. Information on the ingredients, first aid measures, firefighting measures, accidental release, handling and storage, and uh, personal protection and precautions to control exposure. So this is the basic information that probably most of us who would be using chemicals uh, might want to be able to, to access. The next slide shows, um, the second page shows sec sections 9 through 16. This is your more technical information, but it does give you some information about um, disposal, some information about uh, ecology, and some toxicology information too. So when you're going to be ordering chemicals in the future, um, especially after June of 2016, this is the kind of information you're going to need, want to have on hand. Um, as I mentioned before, the safety data sheet format is very consistent. It will be consistent for all chemicals. Um, for example, Section 8 will always be about exposure control and personal protective equipment. Um, and as I also mentioned earlier, the information on the label and the safety data sheet are related. The pictograms will be the same, the precautionary statements will be the same, so you'll see a, a real good match there. Um, if you'd like to have some more information about this um, hazard communication standard, you can go to this website or you can simply do a Google search for OSHA hazard communication standard. It'll take you right here. Um, on this page you will see that they have some downloads. They have three different quick cards, a label, pictogram, and a safety data sheet quick card, as well as um, 
some more expanded information in the OSHA briefs on the safety data sheets and the labels and the pictograms. Um, the quick cards are, are a real good way to just quickly look at the information and maybe post that on a bulletin board so people can become aware of some of the symbols. And that is it for this webinar. Um, feel free to contact me if you have any questions. I, I won't pretend to be an expert on the HASCOM standard. Um, what I know is what I've learned through my research, but I can sure find some answers out for you. So if you have any questions, there's my contact information. Otherwise, uh, watch our website. I, like I said, I will re-record this um, webinar so that all of the uh, graphics will show up in the slides, and we will post that link um, on our service unit website under the little red square that says Wednesday webinars. You'll be able to find the link right there. So um, thanks for joining us. And remember, next week's webinar will be on PD360, followed by STEM opportunities, tech tips, and common sense media. Um, does anybody have any questions right now that you'd like to type in that chat box? Will the forms be available online to help us label our containers? Um, that is a question that I do not know, but I will try to find the answer for you. Thanks for asking that. It's, it's my understanding that the manufacturers are going to be responsible for labeling the chemicals. If you're talking about um, something like Windex that you might buy at the grocery store that your custodian is using. I, I'm sure that's maybe what you're meaning by, you know, helping you label the containers. I'm sure that OSHA will have to have something available um, in those kinds of cases. But I'll, I'll check with uh, my contact at the Department of Labor. Any other questions? Oh, uh, Teach Chemistry have a storeroom with many old chemicals. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how to answer that question. I will, uh, uh, I'll call the Department of Labor and I'll find out for you. Well, all staff have to sign off in regard to this training. Um, according to uh, the, the man that I talked to at the Department of Labor, he did say it's a good um, idea to have all of your staff be aware of this. Um, and so, Doug, in answer to your question, what we're going to do at the service unit here is that we are going to have all of our staff watch this and sign off somehow. Okay, any other questions? All right, thanks again for uh, joining me, and uh, I hope to see you at future Wednesday webinars.